What's up you guys, it's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and diving into another comparison between electrical components, but today it's light switches. So we're gonna look at a Leviton residential light switch. This is just a standard two-way light switch, costs about 50 cents. Uh, you'll see big boxes of these at your local home improvement store and a commercial, the step up light switch that's gonna be more than two times the cost, but comes in at about $1.25. Now, overall, right away, just size-wise, you are say, thinking, okay, the commercial size-wise looks much larger. That's got to be worth the money, right? Well, I mean, the overall size of the light switch doesn't have actually that much to do with if it's going to hold up better over time, it's going to carry the load better, it's going to create less heat, and it's just going to be a better light switch for you. So you got to tear into the internals. I did a very similar video to this, but on outlets with the link right here. And overall, it's been very well received and I am personally learning a ton. So there are hundreds and hundreds of comments from everybody just DIY weekend warrior experience uh, to failures in their house to professionals and what they've seen over decades and decades and decades of experience. So one, I just really appreciate all those comments and all that information. That is more value than I'll ever be able to bring by myself. So really crowdsourcing that together uh, is really interesting to read through. Now, I do not expect you guys to read through hundreds of comments because no one has that time, but I am going into all those comments. So in the future, not ready right now, but on my website, everydayhomerepairs.com, I will be putting a section on each of these videos, which will have a sister blog article or article out there. And that will break down what I've learned from the comments. And then also just what I've learned as these projects develop over time and really bake down some of the best comments, maybe things I've left out or just other tips and tricks for you guys that I think are valuable. So that'll be in the near future. Depending on when you're watching this, you can jump over there and look down in the description and see the link to the website and the appropriate article. But let's jump in and actually look at the internals of the slice switch and see if this one is actually worth the money between the residential and the commercial and what you're getting for that money. So let's walk through these side by side. So we have our residential and commercial, both made by Leviton. Like we commented before, the overall size, but what I just wanna show you here is how we are holding the mounting bracket and the top actual plastic switch to the bottom housing that holds the contacts. Those are just held together by two rivets, one on top and then one on bottom. That is the same design between residential and commercial. Nothing is different. Those are actually the components that I hacksawed off to get the housing out without much damage. So really no difference on how they're held together. Now let's go into the mounting brackets themselves. Again, commercial, residential. The brackets are almost a one-to-one -one match. Uh, the metal is no thicker. The design is, is the same. The only difference that I could make a comment on is the commercial does have this. It's an additional grounding plate. And those that are professionals, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I believe what this does is if you ground, which you should ground the switch, then this, this will help to extend that ground to the metal electrical box if you have a metal electrical box so you do not have to ground that separately so it can save you time on the install just depending on your overall setup so really outside of that that's going to be depending on what you're working with for your install there's no structural difference between the actual brackets now going into the switches themselves which can fail, right? These are plastic, so this could fail over time. Yes, the size difference, but we'll talk a little bit more on that later on. I don't feel that's that important. And then when we actually look at these, the component that's gonna hit the contact and is gonna open or close the circuit is actually right here. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm probably looking at the pivot joint. I'm looking at that because those are actually the things that need to hold up over time through many, many cycles. And that's what's going to cause a failure if you have one at this level. And really, there's not too much difference between. There's, it's a little different design. If we look at the residential here, 
Um, but to be honest, the residential almost looks a little more robust with that structural spline coming through. But again, probably not worth any uh, money. Now probably the most interesting part, and that is the housing and contacts themselves. One thing to touch on, um, and I just really in all these videos, this speed wire. So if you have a 14 gauge wire, speed wiring through the back here is not recommended. That is a one and done install. And why is that? Because if you see here, the wire would come through and I can actually show you. The wire will come through and will make contact, but it is held in there by this, this plate right here. If that plate defle deflects too far, and that's actually how you remove it, you would place a small flathead screwdriver in the slot. That's how you would remove it. You're deflecting that, and then obviously your contact is not gonna be solid. With a design like that, because it has very little spring capability, and once, it, once it's deformed, it's deformed, it's just prone to many issues. So I do not recommend ever using that on the residential, commercial, switches, outlets, anything. Just use the screw terminals. All right, when it comes to the contacts, you can see that the contacts are this, again, is a two-way switch. Why is the commercial bigger in terms of housing? Just because the same housing, and this is my best guess, I think it's correct, the same housing is used for a two-way and a three-way switch when in the residential, this isn't. This housing here is strictly for a two-way, so it's much more compact and purpose-built, obviously to save as many fractions of a penny or a penny as possible so they can get the cost down as low as possible. But that is why they're, they're different sizes. That has very little to do with the durability of the switch over time. So again, it's not actually, I'm not seeing the value in the money. One thing I will point out with the commercial that might be of value to you is if you do not want to do the classic shepherd hook install, right? And tighten that down. And a, a note here, Use a flathead screwdriver or a Robinson screwdriver, which is a square head to tighten it down. This is technically not supposed to be a Phillips head and you're gonna have issues tightening that down and not get proper torque on this screw if you don't use a flat head. And one, one commenter in the past has said he tightens it down and then with a Robinson and then he does a flat head with a quarter turn to just really cinch it up. And if you guys have a different way or tips, go ahead and jump down in the comments and let me know. So the shepherd hook going around and when we tighten it, remember you want, to, you want to wrap the shepherd hook in the same direction for which you're going to tighten the screw. So that's gonna make sure it doesn't pop out when you, when you tighten the screw. So the commercial does have a feature and that is it, if you use the, the gauge here and you strip your wire to the same size, you will be able to use these plates here and then just put the straight wire without a shepherd hook underneath and tighten down the terminal and that is perfectly fine. That will make great contact and just as long as you tighten it down like we just described, that will be a good way to go. So you can go straight in from the back. That is a nice feature of the commercial, but overall in terms of the contact, housing, how the design performs, those are the differences. So I wanna hear from you guys and what do you think? Really, I wanna hear from those that don't have much experience but saw that breakdown, but also obviously those with 10, 20, 30, 40 years experience. I really value uh, the guys and gals that have been in the industry that long because you guys have seen an infinite number of scenarios and I wanna know what you think. Residential, 50 cents, commercial, 125, at least on these Leviton switches. So for my money, would I go commercial or residential? I'm voting residential. I didn't see enough of a difference that I think they're gonna hold up any better over time. So I'm gonna go with residential going forward and I don't feel like I'm sacrificing quality or durability. Let me know, this is just Leviton, right? So there's other players in the market, obviously. If you guys know of a reasonably priced switch that you think is superior, also let me know in the comments. I've really enjoyed reading through everybody's perspective and I think it just makes for an overall more valuable video. And in the future, 
we'll be putting that over on the website so we can pass that value on to everyone else without having to read through hundreds of different comments. So before you take off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have at least weekly videos going out on these type of topics and others to help you with your repairs and improvements around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.